Hello and welcome to lesson four in the warehouse management configuration course, enable warehouse management process. This is a completely optional session, so you might benefit or use the functionality that will be discussed in this session, just in case you are required to migrate standard warehouses or standard items that are not using the advanced warehouse management process to use the advanced warehouse management process. So in this session, we're going to review two main features. The first one is enable warehouse setup, and you may use this feature to migrate the warehouses that are not used advanced warehouse management process since the initial configuration to use the advanced warehouse management process. And the second feature is change storage dimension groups for items. And you may use this feature to migrate the standard items to advanced warehouse management item. And actually, it's not only about the changing the storage dimension groups. So using this feature, you may also change storage dimension group, unit sequence group, and assign reservation hierarchies as well. Then we'll discuss the prerequisites and the best practices of changing the storage dimension groups and tracking dimension groups manually on the item level if this is required before the data migration process. As you may know, once you created the warehouse, you will not be able to enable or disable the option of use warehouse management process. So this is a warehouse for the accessories that has been configured initially where the option of use warehouse management process is not enabled. Then the company decided to run or use the advanced warehouse management process and this warehouse. Now let's see how to use the standard functionality in order to enable the advanced warehouse management process for this warehouse. So I'll navigate here to the enable warehouse setup. This is found in warehouse management module, setup, enable warehouse management process, then I'll click new. Then you should select from this list the uh, standard or the legacy warehouses that you have. So I'll select here the warehouse of 81. So this is the accessories warehouse. And you will notice here that uh, the option of use warehouse management process is not taken. So in this section, you should find the warehouses. In this section, you will find the associated locations. So we're going to migrate the warehouses and the locations as well. So as part of the setup or the process of migrating the locations, you should link the standard or the legacy locations to a location profile ID. So when you migrate this to the advanced warehouse management process, it's mandatory that the location to be linked with a location profile ID. So here in uh, 81 uh, warehouse uh, location, I'll say that uh, this is a dummy uh, location. And here, this is a bulk uh, location. And this is a receiving uh, location. You may use uh, the uh, manual functionality to associate or to link location profile ID to each location. And also you may use the open in Excel functionality. So you will open the list of uh, locations in the Excel. So it would be easily to bulk update the targeted locations. So right now, so this is the list of uh, open the, the available open in Excel. So after that, I'll click validate changes. Then now is ready to enable use warehouse management process. Then I'll click process changes. This will be run in the background. And then once it's completed, it will say here that warehouse 81 has been enabled to use a warehouse management process. You will notice also that the option has been tagged. If we navigate back to the warehouse, you will see that uh, the option has been enabled. And if we check also the associated inventory locations, you will see that uh, every location has the targeted location profile ID. Now let's move to the second feature, change storage dimension group for items. You may use this feature to migrate the standard inventory items that have been initially created to then use the advanced warehouse management process. So using this function, you can uh, associate a new storage dimension group on an item level that use the advanced warehouse management process, reservation hierarchy, and unit sequence group in one step. And now let's see how to migrate the items that have been created initially with the intention only to track and process the items in the standard inventory flow. 
but later on it's required right now to migrate the items to be used the advanced warehouse management process using the same master data and by keeping the historical transactions of these items so this process will be managed through the feature or the form of change storage dimension group for items that found in warehouse management module set up enable warehouse management process then a change storage dimension group for items in the changes to the dimension group for items, you should list here the items that should be migrated alongside with the new storage dimension group, reservation hierarchy, unit sequence group of each item. And instead of the manual selection of the items, you can use the Open in Excel experience to prepare the items that will be migrated alongside with the new dimension groups. So it would be easy for you to manage it in Excel. Or maybe by consider using the data management workspace to upload the items to the change storage dimension group for items form. Please note that the items that are allowed to be migrated or to be changed by this form are the items that already link it to storage dimension group that has location level is enabled. So when you are planning for the implementation, if you have plans to use advanced warehouse management in the future, then you should link these items to storage dimension group that has location level is enabled, even if, if this location will be like a dummy location or a fixed value specified in the warehouse form. Otherwise, you will have to perform additional steps later on to change the storage dimension group of these items to storage dimension group that has location level is enabled before using this form. Let's give it a try for one of the items that is linked to storage dimension group with only site and warehouse levels. So if I click here new and then I'll select the item number LCD cleaning kit, then this message will be populated stating that you can only change the storage dimension group for items with an active location storage dimension. So in that case, you will have first to change the storage dimension group of this item to another storage dimension group with location level is enabled before using this form. I'll show you later how to manually change the storage dimension group of the items. And now let's see how the process works for the items that already link it to storage dimension group where the location level is enabled. So I'll click here new and then I'll select the item. So this is 30 watt USB-C power adapter item. Then I'll select here the new storage dimension group. So I'll select WMS. Indeed, this storage dimension group has user warehouse management process equal yes or enabled. Then in the reservation hierarchy, I'll select default and the unit sequence will be uh, unit and boxes. And then I'll click save. After that, I'll click validated changes in order to ensure that everything is okay. So here the message is ready to process the changes. Then I'll click process the changes. And here you can run the process in batch processing and you can run the process also on parallel task for better performance. So I'll click here, okay. So right now the process storage dimension group change job is added to the batch queue. Definitely you can navigate to the batch form in order to review the progress of this job or you can click here batch jobs in order to navigate directly to the job. But before that, I would like to check the items blocked for inventory updates form. As long as the process is currently processing, then the item will be blocked for updates. So here you will see the items that are currently blocked. Uh, here you can click on the batch jobs in order to review the job. So the job will be something storage. So this is the one that currently executing, executing process storage dimension group changes. So here you will see that the system is uh, performing several tasks in order to migrate the items. So until the job will be completed, let's go back. So when the job will be completed, you will notice that the item will disappear from here because the form has default filter uh, equal no. So I'll click yes. And here you can review the items that have been migrated. Now let's talk about how to change the storage or tracking dimension groups of items that have been transacted. This could be essential in scenarios like items that have been created without the intention of being tracked by batch or serial. But later on, and as per the business requirements, these items should be tracked right now per serial or batch. Or maybe these items should be processed using the advanced warehouse management process, but the storage dimension group of these items has only site and warehouse level enabled, but the location level is disabled. So you are not able to use the standard function of change storage dimension group for items. 
For that case, you can change the tracking or the storage dimension group on item level, even if this item has been transacted, but with some considerations. The first one, you should ensure that there is no in hand for this item. And the second point, you should run and perform inventory closing. And the third point, you should ensure that there are no changes on the financial inventory levels. And now let's see how to change the storage and tracking dimension group of this item. So this is Surface Keyboard, where the storage dimension group should be changed from site warehouse to be site warehouse and location in order to process the updates of this item in the change storage dimension group for items form to enable the advanced warehouse management process. Also, the tracking dimension group will be changed from none to be tracked per serial level for the warranty purposes. Since this item is already transacted, then I would expect if we try to change the storage or tracking dimension group, the process will be stopped with an error. Let's give it a try. So here in the product tab, setup, dimension groups, then I'll select here instead of site warehouse, I'll select site warehouse and location. Then this error message is through in stating that the new dimension group cannot be assigned. The physical inventory has not reached zero in hand. And this is the first validation. You should ensure that the item has no in hand. Please note that this validation message is introduced by default since app 10.0.24. So if you are testing with application version lower than 10.0.24, then I would expect this validation message might be very. Now let's navigate to the movement journal in order to write off the on hand quantity. So I'll close. And then here in the movement journal, right now we have on hand of 100 inches. So I have here a negative 100 for this warehouse. And here I selected a specific offset account that I created for the WMS migration. And you should pay attention to, to this point. When you write off or create this movement journal right now, then I would expect you will create another uh, movement journal with positive uh, quantity in order to increase the on hand after migrating the inventory. Please note that the account that specified here in the movement journal will be used later on for the inventory closing adjustment transactions. So you should clarify that to the accounting and the finance team that they should expect some adjustments later on on this account. Right now, I'll click post. After that, if I go back to the product right now and then try to change the storage dimension group once again, and I'll select here site, warehouse, and location. If I click OK, right now, this is another validation message stating that the new dimension group cannot be assigned. Physical inventory transactions might exist and or financial inventory transactions are not fully settled. That means the inventory closing has not been performed yet. That's why we still have some inventory transactions that are not fully settled. How to ensure that you have inventory transactions that have not been fully settled? So if you navigate now to the inventory transactions and then check the inventory transactions, you will see that here on the transactions level, you have something called value open. As long as the value open is still yes, so this means that these transactions have not been fully settled. These transactions will be settled after you perform the inventory closing. So here in the closing and adjustment form that found in inventory management, periodic task, closing and adjustment, I'll perform inventory closing. So here I'll select close inventory and then close inventory up to, I'll make it like today and then click OK. Now the inventory close job is added to the batch queue and this will be processed until this will be processed after that you will be able to change the storage or the tracking dimension group on the item level so let's refresh here indeed this might take time as per the volume of the transactions now the inventory closing has been completed let's navigate back to the item and right now, let's try to change the storage dimension group. So here in the product dimension groups, then I'll be able to change the storage dimension group from site warehouse to site warehouse and location. So now this is possible. And now the question is, what about the items that have item model group of moving average or a standard cost of price where the inventory closing is not required? 
Before app 10.0.24, this was managed by a flight and it was enabled by the product team for each environment as per the customer request. But in app 10.0.24 and afterward, this enabled by default and you can change the storage or the tracking dimension group for the moving average or standard cost items without the need to contact Microsoft or the product team. And now let's change the tracking dimension group of this item. The new tracking dimension group should be serial instead of none. But before that, let's review the third assumption where you will not be able to introduce new groups that have different financial inventory. The fact whether the financial inventory option is marked or enabled on the storage dimension levels or the tracking dimension group levels will indicate that the item cost price will be calculated at this level. So for example, here in this storage dimension group, the warehouse is marked as financial inventory. So this will ensure that the item cost price will be calculated on the warehouse level, which means the item cost price might be vary from warehouse to another warehouse. If we navigate back to the tracking dimension group, you will notice also that we have financial inventory on the tracking dimension group levels. So for this example, the serial number is marked as financial inventory. This will ensure that each serial could have a different item cost price because the cost price is calculated on the serial level. So when it comes to changing the tracking or the storage dimension groups of an item, the valid groups are the groups that have the same financial inventory levels like the old groups. So let's test and validate this assumption. So this item has tracking dimension group called none, where no financial inventory level nor physical inventory levels are marked. And I just created two tracking dimension groups the first one called serial, where the physical inventory is only marked on the warehouse level, and another one called serial financial, where the financial level and the physical level are marked on the serial number level. Then let's navigate back to the product and try to change the tracking dimension group of this item. So I'll click here dimension groups, and then in the tracking dimension group, I'll try first to select serial financial and then click OK. In that case, the system threw in this, uh, this validation message stating that the new dimension group cannot be assigned. Other financial dimensions apply while invented transaction is, exists. However, if I try right now to select the serial that uh, has uh, no different financial levels, but just new physical inventory level, I'll select serial and then click OK, and now this is possible. Now let's recap what we discussed in this session. So this session was about enable warehouse management process for the warehouses and the items that have been initially created without the intention to use the advanced warehouse management process. So first we reviewed the functionality of the enable warehouse setup form that used to migrate the standard warehouses that have been created where the option of use uh, advanced warehouse management process is disabled. And using this form, we managed to migrate the warehouses and the locations to be advanced warehouse and advanced locations. And then uh, we reviewed the functionality of the page of change storage dimension group for items. And using this form, you can migrate the standard inventory items to be uh, advanced warehouse management items. In this form, you can assign uh, the new storage dimension group that has used advanced warehouse management process, unit sequence, reservation, hierarchies. Then we discussed the prerequisites and the best practices of changing the storage and the tracking dimension groups manually on the item levels. Thank you for watching and your time. Please reach out if I can help. Take care and good luck.